Hey everybody, how's it going? Just checking the camera angle here, a little bit upski. I had some plans, I was actually gonna go cutting today. It's pouring rain again, which is good, we needed it. It was so dry here when the cars would go up the gravel road. It was so dusty, the crops were looking bad, my garden was dry. Um, it's good. The bad part is uh, we're doing indoor videos when we want to be outside. I was going to run some saws today, but it is what it is, as they say. I want to talk to you guys about something. Um, cylinder scoring, cylinder damage, how far is too far, cleaning them, honing them, all this good stuff that you read about on the internet. I want to give you guys my thoughts on cylinder damage. How far is too far, okay? And I'm going to grab a couple of pistons too and outline this to you guys, okay? Um, I want to show you guys a few things. We're going to take the scope. I want you to see, you guys have seen my 562 XP. I want you guys to see inside the cylinder on this. Uh, this cylinder's got scoring. And I'm going to show you guys one of my own saws with a scored up cylinder. I've been running this saw for three years. I don't know how many hours are on it, hundreds of hours on this cylinder. I'm going to show you guys. Anyways, let me get set up here and let's talk about cylinder damage, honing, piston scoring, cylinder scoring, and all that stuff. I'm going to show you guys a bunch of cylinders. I Every cylinder I change, I keep usually just to show you guys. Give me a few seconds to set up here. Okay, let's start with pistons, piston damage. Uh, I just have random pistons and old boxes. Uh, I'll tell you what they are and how they got damaged. I'm going to bring you guys in close here. I want you guys to to see this. This is I think this will be a good video for you guys. Uh, I get a lot of questions about piston damage. Okay. This is a 272 XP piston. So let me clean it off here. This thing was full of grease when I got it. Okay. You know when you pull a saw over and it's got zero compression? Look at this. This is a good example. This saw has been straight gassed and run super lean and it gets hot and it actually melts the piston and it closes this ring groove. Okay. So look, the ring is stuck on the back and it's stuck in the front. Okay. Scoring on all sides. This is not the worst example. I think I buffed this up, but... This scoring on all sides of the piston is generally straight gassed, okay? But, again, if you look through the exhaust port and you see that, she's toast. And often she needs a cylinder. I cleaned the cylinder up on that saw. It's still not the best cylinder. Here's another example of wear. Look at this piston. This looks great, doesn't it? It's my 461. See that? Right here. Right here. See the little shiny spots right here. Notice there's no machine groove. See how shiny this is? This piston rattled in the bore. And a lot of times when you see this, these, these faint shiny spots, this piston was actually doing this in the bore. When you drop it in the bore, it was going clack, 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 clack. Looks good on paper, but it's worn out. See how shiny it is? That's wear, okay? Now this saw had about 10 hours on it probably. I don't know why it was so worn. It was not scored in any way. Still don't know why. Okay. And this piston came out clean like this. So if you see that, take your, take your piston. This is probably not going to fit. Put it in the bore and see if it rattles. Right? Like this. Okay. See that? This piston should fit in this bore, but it doesn't. Okay, because it's worn out. So be aware of that. That's a common problem I see. What do we got here? 630 Johnson Red Super. Again, worn on the intake side. Where here and here. This thing was either run really lean or it was also straight gassed. Again, scoring all the way around. You can feel them with your fingers. Now, often you can clean these up. Okay? 
If you can't get a piston, try and clean that up, but you need rings. See the marks? Here, and here, and here, and here. These rings are no good, okay? These are thin rings, you can't get these anymore. So in this case, you would need a new piston. What else do we got here? Again, I love sharing this stuff with you guys. This is an MS440. Notice. Intake side's good. See the shiny part though? Starting to get wear on the skirt. See if we can get a... My camera does not want to focus today. Focus. There you go. See the shiny spot and the little chips here? When a piston starts to wear out, it will often break the skirt. Right? It's going up and down. It'll st it'll start to rock and grab. Now look at this side. This saw was run horribly lean and just burnt up. Okay? And again, once the ring gets stuck, see how it's stuck? It's, not st it's sticking out on the intake side. It's stuck on the exhaust side. That's it. It's, it's over. So, again, all this stuff is often repairable, new top end, but uh, most of the damage I see is from guys overheating saws. They're getting too lean and they grenade. Here's an example of a thin piston skirt. This was out of a, I think a Husqvarna 181 that was run for 25 years. And, uh, Again, got a little too hot on this side. And the piston skirt actually broke. They get, they will get thin and they will crack often. You'll take a chunk out. So if you hear a rocking sound in your, in your saw, like a clacking sound, sometimes that could be bottom end, but that also could be a worn out piston. Here's another one. Again, this is an original cylinder from a 281 Husqvarna. Notice how shiny it is. It's quite worn. The skirts are starting to get thin. Okay, there's your intake side with the locating pin. Sorry guys, there you go. See how shiny this is? Now this piston goes in this cylinder. See how it's clackety clackety clack? Not terrible, but if you kept running this, eventually you'd probably break that skirt. Okay, so that's piston wear. Um, if you notice stuff like that, it's uh, it's time to change the piston or the top end. Here's the famous home light that we took the bridge out of. Okay, there's an example of catastrophic failure. I know, why did I do that? Just to see. You gotta have fun sometimes. Okay, on the way down it grabbed that bridge, probably took a chunk off the ring, and on the way up it it caught and it gouged the cylinder. Okay, if you can feel a deep gouge like that, a top end's done. What do we have here? Here's an MS260 that the plating wore off. This is an OEM 260 top end. You see that? Okay, the plating was getting thin. And it literally just took the plating off like bad. And then when I, I couldn't see that when I went to clean the cylinder off and I just scuffed it up. That's what we were left with. Notice the heavy, heavy carbon deposits. That's why I use the oil I do, that Opti 2, because it does not do that. Again, another big chip here. That doesn't matter so much. Don't like it, but seeing where we got little, you can see the discoloration. Okay, so if you notice a thin spot, it'll discolor. Um, it's time for a new top end, usually. This is why I don't use acid to clean my cylinders. You see that? See the bubbling in there? Uh, my buddy did this. He gave it to me, so I figured I'd show you guys. See the bubbling? Uh, this cylinder, this is a 576 cylinder, it was cleaned with acid. And it actually got underneath the plating and it bubbled it. So, I, I typically don't use acid. Now, honing cylinders. 
I do not hone chrome cylinders like this home light. Nikasil? Yeah, no problem. Here's a 281 cylinder. This is an original old school 281 cylinder that's been honed. Look how nice that looks. Now, what I find is um, when you hone a cylinder, uh, the piston looks nicer after breaking. Sometimes you'll get little burrs and stuff in your ports. I think honing's a good deal. You have to do it properly and with care. But, I mean, if you ruin a cylinder honing it, typically that cylinder probably was no good anyways. Okay, this is actually the piston out of the cylinder. But again, see the piston? It's rocking. Okay, hopefully that shows you a little bit of how pistons fail and the things to look for. Um, the number one killer of saws is heat. Heat either from a dull chain, and that's usually what it is around here, or a lean high jet. Um, it's usually both is what I find. Um, if, you're, if you're porting saws, guys, the number one thing you can do is learn how to sharpen a chain. Uh, a lot of these saws I port, they'll cut at 11 to 11.5, you know, 11,500 RPM with a sharp chain pulling good chips out. With a dull chain, they could cut at 12,500, 13,000. That's enough to cook a saw. Um, especially if you're a little lean. If you're a little lean, now you're revving, you know, to the moon. The saw's over revving, it's getting too hot, and you grenade the saw. So uh, a lot of failures I see are just from a dull chain. And the saw's literally running at full tilt the whole time it's in the wood. The chain gets hot, it transfers the heat to the crankshaft. The bottom end gets warm, the incoming intake and, you know, fuel charge gets warm, and it pops the saw. So, um, okay, I want to talk about cylinder scoring. This is my 562. Uh, when I learn things, I, I'm going to share them with you guys, okay? This is my 562. There we go. I already loosened that, I forgot. This saw came to me completely and thoroughly blown up. Look at the nice color of that plug. Good old auto-tune. Say what you want, guys. Auto-tune works. It's nice and chocolate brown. Uh, I do like auto-tune. I don't like it when it breaks, but I sure like it when it's running. And I'm going to tell you guys, I've been running this 562, a saw that either you love it or you hate it, I got one of these just to see what the dealio is. Um, it's just another saw to me and I wanted to run it. I've been running this saw hard for three years and <laughs> it, I haven't had a single problem with it. It can be a little finicky to hot start if you don't follow the hot starting procedure. If you do, it starts. If it doesn't, it's a day that it's so hot, nothing I own will start. So I had a day like that last summer. It was... 40 Celsius, like 50% humidity, just hot. I was cutting a tree that fell over in a storm, something big. None of my saws would restart, starting with this one. And I went, ah, junky auto-tune. It's funny, we always go there, right? Oh, it's got to be the auto-tune. No, it was just too hot. My 440 wouldn't start, or my 044 wouldn't start. My 365 Husky wouldn't start. Like, nothing I owned would start. So, um, it's just too hot. Now... When I got this saw, there was no aftermarket top ends available, and it was a, it was, I think I paid, I think I paid about $75 for this saw with a bar and chain. It was thoroughly blown up. It started, it's funny, it restarted, I brought it home, I put fuel in it, I pulled it over about 10 times, it fired up and idled. The minute you touch the throttle, it would die. This saw had no crank seals left in it, and the bearings were completely toast. The bearing sucked through the top end, went through the transfers, got caught in the, uh, actually, let's find that piston. I'll show you the damage. Here's that piston, folks. See this? That's pieces of bearing that got sucked through the transfers, okay? This side is worse. There you go. See that? Came through the transfers and... 
Now this saw had no compression, zero zilch, nada. So when I pulled the saw down, the, the cylinder looked pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, ah, oh. I gave 75 for the saw. A cylinder here in Canada then was like over 400. There was probably 100, $125 worth of bearings, gaskets, seals, carb kit. So I'm like, I'm gonna be into this saw for like 600 bucks. Well, you could buy a new one for 650 then. They've gone up quite a bit since then, but um, the saw was two years old. So I was like, well, whatever. I'm sure they'll come up with aftermarket top ends eventually. Um, I brought it to my buddy. He said, bring me that cylinder. I want to have a look at it. He was curious. Well, he's been building saws probably since the early 1990s, somewhere, somewhere in there, mid, mid 1990s. He looked at it and he went, I'd run it. And I was like, yeah, bottom end's kind of expensive. He goes, run it. I think it'll be good. So instead of making up my mind or reading a bunch of stuff, I thought, you know what? I can learn from this. Maybe it will last. Maybe. Um, I want to show you guys something here before I quit flapping and I'll, I'm going to put the scope down this, uh, exhaust hole or spark plug hole and show you guys the, the scoring on this thing. And, uh, I just want you guys to learn. I'm not saying put scored cylinders on your saws, but what I am saying is sometimes, sometimes they will last. Now, one thing about this saw, it doesn't have the hugest compression. It just doesn't. Okay, I'm going to put this spark plug back in. She's got all kinds of threads here, okay? It still has compression though, don't you? Okay, it won't hold itself up, but it's got enough, right? It's not, it, it's not worn out compression, but it's not thumpy thump. And now I don't know what a good one of these has for compression. I reckon this has a high exhaust roof. Okay, let's pull this out of here. Let's put the scope down here. I wanna show you guys the damage. When this saw pops, and it probably will one day, they all do. Could take two minutes or 20 years you don't know when this saw pops we're gonna tear it down and port it now I've never ported this cylinder because I figured I'm already pushing my luck I'm gonna put the scope down there I want you guys to see this because it's it's incredible okay here's a shot with our good old probe Clint thanks for sending this to the channel again buddy um, I use it all the time just gonna put the piston down to bottom dead center and let's take a peek right away next to the exhaust port on the right there that is a score and again over top of the right side transfer more scoring you can see the the light colored spots the plating is a little thinner on there it's it's not a good scene folks but it's still running and again a few scores over top of the left side um this was more of a, a science experiment. Will it run? And three years later and multiple tanks, it's still running. None of those scores go over the exhaust port and down into it. So I'm not saying do this, but I want to be open and honest. There's a scored cylinder that's still running and putting trees on the ground. Now, how nasty does that thing, you see those, that one score to the right of the exhaust port, and then the right side transfer, there's like four heavy scores in there. Now, that is going to affect compression, but, I mean, if I didn't try this, I mean, I've gotten three years out of this saw. I've put a lot of miles on this saw, Fred. I use this thing all the time. It's, it's just one of my favorites, like straight up. And yeah, it's a new whiz-bang, go-fast saw, but I mean, this thing runs like a ported saw, and it's stock. And just because I'm having fun, let's have a look-see. What does the exhaust look like? I don't know, I haven't looked at this thing in about two years. What does it look like? Let's pull her over, put the decomp in. Look at 
like brand new I see one little line on the piston you guys see that so something something went through there who knows what That is fuel on the piston. That's what, there you go. Still has the machine marks on it. These cameras make everything look worse. <laughs> but again, whatever. It is what it is, right? It's just a power saw. Kind of interesting. I hope you guys enjoy this stuff. I just, I like sharing. I like sharing my ideas with you guys. Whether they're right or wrong. I don't know. Hey, I could have put this thing together and it could have blown up right away. Then it would have been the wrong idea. But because I did this, you know, uh, I listened to my buddy and he's like, yeah, try it. What, what's the worst that could happen? It's like, yeah, I guess. Set of bearings. But here we are. Uh, you guys ask about the muffler mod on this. Um, you can't. I don't know if you can see it. See that dark spot there? I put an extra hole, which basically bypasses the, there you go, right there. That's the stock outlet. I put an extra hole in there. Uh, keeps it running cooler. Now, I still really, really want to port this saw, and I really want to put a pipe on it because these things run too hot. They really do. They are good running. I mean, I can't think. Now, you still guys are going to flame me for this, but I can't think of a better running 60cc saw, period. Um, in my opinion, this thing's an absolute screamer. You keep it on the pipe, and it will pull a long bar. I'd like to put a 32 on this and see if it'll pull it someday. Um, I had a 19, what, 1992 or 94 262 XP like the the real good to go fast one with the good carb on it and That that thing is strong, but it's not this saw <laughs> Not even close And this thing scored. That's what's funny. Um, I think one of these days. I'd like to put a new top end on this uh, I don't know who makes them now. Maybe if meteor does or uh, um, Maybe highway I don't know who makes top ends for these any of you guys know? I would like to replace the top end on this before, you know, or just keep running until it blows up. There. Oh yeah, she's dry. There we go. I don't even mind the purge valve on these things. I really don't. Okay, yeah, let's fire this thing up. I just want to show you guys. Uh, scoring doesn't always mean... Now, one thing I always do wrong with this saw is I ran this in winter last time. I ran this in winter. I got to let the auto-tune figure out what it wants to do, right? the auto tune do its thing um usually leaving it on fast idle see how long that was in that 10 seconds it's like oh it's warm out now boom it adjusts and it does its thing these run really well you have to run them you see that guys if if i didn't know better and i've had this saw for how many years now i'm just gonna move you guys back here if i didn't know any better okay because I'm a carb saw guy, right? I like to turn a screwdriver and I have no problems with it. Right there, that's where these get a bad rap. Uh, in real time, see how it was bogging and it died? Um, that's because I didn't let it do its thing. I'm like, oh, I need to blip the throttle to get that diaphragm moving. That's not what it was doing. The auto-tune, last time I ran this, it was minus 20 out this winter. Uh, 
it's plus 20 now. So the, the auto tune was like, Hey, let me do my thing here, buddy. I'm in charge, which is hard for us as soft orders, right? But if I didn't know any better and I just fired up, I'd be like, Oh, I, I tried one of those once. It was a boggy piece of crap. Was it? Or <laughs> Get much better than that does it and again a scored a scored saw look how good that runs and starts is it gonna last forever probably not uh, I haven't looked in that cylinder for I don't know a year two years um, doesn't look any worse than when I put it together we did hold this cylinder and I think that's a B a piston I think it's slightly bigger I think it says a B on the top um, you know I have a lot of time on this saw because you can see a little bit of carbon build up. Enough that uh, there's enough carbon build up in this saw. With the Optimal I use, that's about as much carbon as you get generally. So that Opti 2 oil. Um, this thing's got a lot of time on it. I've put a lot of firewood in my truck. I just like it because it's light. It's, it's a lightweight, smooth, some of the best anti-vibe I've ever felt is on this saw. And it's nasty. This will almost keep up with a stock 70cc saw at a pound lighter or so. It's not, it's not that it's a featherweight, but I mean, it's, uh, it's a great saw. Anyhow, friends, uh, scored pistons, scored cylinders. Uh, I wanted to show you guys that. I hope you guys got something out of this. Just because there's some scoring in a cylinder doesn't mean it's no good. Should you replace it? Of course you should. Uh, if I was working on one of your saws and I saw that, I'd be like, you need a top end. But sometimes, friends, sometimes you can get away without changing the top end. If you're willing to risk it. If those scores were right over top of the exhaust port, I probably wouldn't have done this. Because the rings, eventually, you're going to catch that plating, right? As it comes out of the exhaust port and back in. So, anyhow, friends... Uh, Sorry we couldn't be outside cutting today, but it is what it is. It's pouring rain out, and uh, I'm just happy to hang out with you guys in the power saw shop. Anyhow, as always, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, hit me up. My email's on my about page. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later, guys.